can you speed up your metabolism? Or do you think you have a slow metabolism? And if so, can it be fixed? The answer to that question is yes, there are things you can change. And also no, there are certain things you can't manipulate. Hi, my name is Dr. Savali Powell. I'm a professor in bariatric medicine, a clinical weight loss expert, and I'm also a registered nutritionist. Additionally, I've dealt with my own weight issues, so I understand weight loss from a personal level as well as a professional one. Today, I will discuss ways you may be able to boost your metabolic rate. However, in order to do this, you first have to understand what is metabolism to figure out whether you can and cannot change it. In simple terms, your metabolism is the engine that converts nutrients from the food you consume into energy. This energy fuels essential bodily functions like breathing, movement, blood circulation, and tissue repair. Think of it as your body's way of turning food into fuel for your daily activities. Now, this bar graph shows the total amount of energy your body can burn in a day. First, you have your basal metabolic rate. The body burns about 70% of its total energy to do the essential functions, as I mentioned. And this is the background energy burn. It's obvious then that the higher your BMR or metabolic rate, the more calories you can expend, even when inactive. The second biggest factor for energy burn is called spontaneous movement, or what we call NEAT, or in other words, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this can account for about 15 to 20% of your total energy burn. I won't go into this as I have a whole video about how you can burn energy through NEAT if you want to click on my link in the description below. However, your body can also burn energy via thermodynamic effect of food, which is the energy required to digest, absorb, and process nutrients from food. You can also burn energy through your planned physical activity, like going for a walk or going to the gym. So looking at the total amount of energy your body can burn in the day, the question is, is it possible to boost your metabolic rate so it may help you lose weight? Well, if we look at some of the factors influencing metabolism, there are some things we may be able to change and some things obviously not. Gender is something most people are born with and men generally have a higher metabolic rate due to their higher muscle mass. Genetics, to a certain extent, plays a role in body composition. Some people are naturally taller, skinnier, bigger bone than others. Some things you can't change about it. Metabolism tends to be slower as you age, so that's something you may not be able to control. Some medical conditions you may be born with or develop, and also medications that you may be taking. On the other hand, there are several easy, effective ways to increase your metabolism, many of which involve making simple changes to your diet and lifestyle that I will now talk about. Number one, increasing EPOC. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, excess post-energy oxygen consumption, or EPOC, refers to the extra oxygen your body consumes after an intense workout. In simple terms, during an intense workout, your metabolic rate increases. When you stop, it doesn't just return to resting immediately, but remains elevated for a period of time. This causes an increased calorie burn even after you've stretched and showered and eaten your post-workout meal. Now, the additional energy expenditure after your workout is known as the afterburn effect. So how does EPOC work? Well, after a vigorous workout, your body needs to restore homeostasis. During this recovery phase, various processes occur, such as replenishing oxygen stores, clearing lactic acid and other metabolic byproducts, repairing muscle tissue. These activities require energy, leading to an increased calorie burn observed after exercise. So what is the duration of EPOC? Well, the high calorie burn during EPOC doesn't last indefinitely. Studies indicate that EPOC is highest right after a workout, but continues to be elevated for a period of time. One experiment found that EPOC increasing metabolic rate to an excess level and 4% after 16 hours for the studied exercise dose. Another study specifically designed to test whether the effect existed for more than 16 hours conducted tests for 48 hours after the conclusion of the exercise and found elevated levels could persist for up to 38 hours for the studied exercise dose. However, to get the most out of your epoch, the idea is to be consistent with your workout so that the additive effects can contribute to an overall metabolic improvement. So how do we maximize this epoch effect? Well, the key to inducing significant epoch is to partake in any kind of high intensity training. So this brings me to point number two, do high intensity interval training to increase EPOC and to increase chondrial function. 
High intensity interval training or HIIT is one way to boost your metabolism and involves quick and intense bursts of activity. During interval training, you alternate between short bursts of intense activity and periods of lower intensity. These recovery periods are used to replenish ATP, or in other words, the energy molecule that your body depleted during the active interval. Well, how does HIIT work to increase EPOC? Intense intervals force you to take in more oxygen, enhancing your aerobic capacity. Therefore, HIIT sessions stimulate a higher EPOC or afterburn because you consume more energy than, for example, going for a walk. In addition, when you do HIIT, mitochondria, the energy powerhouses within the cell, work harder during the intervals to provide more energy, and this causes an increased activation of mitochondria. Now, the more mitochondria you have, the more ATP and the more energy you pr can produce and burn. Chondria can also play an integral role in breaking down fatty acids. For example, for fat loss to occur, fatty acids must be immobilized from our fat stores and transported to the mitochondria for oxidation. Thus, mitochondria can get rid of 40 fat. Therefore, the combination of increased oxygen consumption and mitochondrial activity leads to greater energy burn and epoch during HIT. So to get started on HIIT, choose a modality such as biking or running that you're already familiar with. When running or swimming or cycling, incorporate short bursts of high intensity like sprinting followed by recovery periods. Be cautious not to overdo it. Excessive interval training can have a negative impact on mitochondrial function, glucose tolerance, and insulin release. So if these HIIT exercises are safe for you, they can indirectly help you to speed up your metabolism, leading to higher epoch. Therefore, your muscle cells will burn more energy at rest, which enables you to burn more fat. The key is mixing up your exercise routine and finding the right balance, which ensures you get the benefits without straining your body. Number three, lift heavy things and do resistance training. Research indicates that resistance training may be one of the best ways to increase mitochondrial health. In addition, as weightlifting intensity increases, the epoch duration also increases. When you build muscle through resistance training, your body expends even more energy at rest. The increase in resting metabolic rate with strength training is observed because muscle cells require more energy or calories to maintain themselves compared to fat cells. This means you will burn more calories throughout the day, even when you're not exercising. Now, strength training is especially important when trying to lose weight because there's a risk of losing fat and muscle during weight loss. However, strength training helps you preserve muscle mass. When you lose weight without maintaining muscle mass, metabolism can slow down. So weightlifting helps counteract this effect. Therefore, incorporating strength training into fitness routines not only helps you build and retain muscle, but also supports a higher metabolism. Number four, eat spicy foods to increase your metabolism. Capsaicin found in chili peppers can increase thermogenesis, or in other words, heat production, potentially enhance calorie burn. It activates receptors in fat cells, leading to increased energy expenditure. Research suggests consuming capsaicin could burn 10 to 20 additional calories per meal. Over several years, this might actually contribute to a small amount of energy burn and weight loss. I personally love my chilies and douse my food every chance I get. Spicy foods may also indirectly help with weight management. Some studies suggest that people who consume chili peppers tend to take in fewer calories, probably because of their appetite suppressing properties. So while spicy foods won't magically melt away your body fat, maybe combining them with other strategies that might boost metabolism may provide an additive effect. Number five, drink tea to boost metabolism. Dr. Andrew Huberman is always talking about the traditional South American herbal tea called Ramate. Although it's rich in antioxidants and nutrients, Ramate may boost metabolism and increase fat burn. Research suggests that ingesting herbal mate during exercise enhances fat oxidation or thermogenesis compared to exercising without it. Additionally, herbal mate can help treat obesity by reducing cholesterol, glucose, triglycerides in the blood. Both green tea and oolong tea can contribute to fat burning. Now, green tea contains antioxidants and a moderate amount of caffeine. Some studies suggest that green tea may slightly boost metabolism due to its higher concentration of catechins. Green tea is also thought to decrease high blood pressure and lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Oolong tea has also been suggested to enhance metabolism and fat oxidation, promoting weight loss. Number six, make sure you eat enough calories. Yes, you did hear me right. If you consi consistently eat significantly fewer calories than your body needs, 
it can adapt by slowing down your metabolism. Unfortunately, caloric adaption doesn't support weight loss in the long term. Although for weight loss and fat burning, you do want to consume fewer calories than you burn, your body still needs to get enough fuel and nutrients to perform body function. So the aim is to consume enough calories to match your RMR, your basal metabolic rate, to prevent your metabolism from slowing down. It is important to strike a balance between calorie reduction and maintaining metabolic health. Remember, gradual and sustainable changes are more effective than extreme calorie restriction. Number seven, eat plenty of protein at every meal. Now, eating protein-rich foods can temporarily increase your metabolism for a few hours. This is called the thermic effect of food, or TEF. It's caused by the extra calories required to digest and absorb and process the nutrients in your meal. Now, protein causes the largest rise in TEF. Dietary protein requires 20 to 30% of its usable energy to be expended for metabolism compared to 5 to 10% for carbs and 0.3% for fats. This means when you consume protein, your body expends more energy to process it, contributing to a temporary boost in metabolism. Eating more protein can also help prevent muscle loss during weight loss. Muscle preservation is crucial because muscle tissue is metabolically active and contributes to overall calorie expenditure. Therefore, eating enough protein boosts your metabolism so you can burn more calories and support muscle health. Number eight, stay hydrated. Dehydration can reduce your metabolic rate. Water is essential for various metabolic processes. Aim for about eight cups or 64 ounces of water daily. Now, herbal teas and infused waters also count. Number nine, get a good night's sleep. So deep sleep also allows your body to recover and repair cells from daily wear and tear. A 2019 study found that prolonged sleep deprivation, four nights or more, slightly reduces how your body metabolizes fat. However, a good night's sleep can quickly restore this effect. Insufficient sleep is associated with a higher risk of weight gain. When you don't get enough rest, it affects various hormones and metabolic processes. Ghrelin, the hunger hormone, increases when you're not sleeping enough or you're sleep deprived. This can also lead to increased appetite and cravings. Number 10, reduce stress. Chronic stress increases cortisol, a stress hormone. Elevated cortisol levels can increase appetite, promote weight gain, and fat storage. Impaired sleep can also lead to a breakdown of muscle mass, which in turn lowers the resting metabolic rate. As I mentioned a number of times previously, muscle mass significantly influences our metabolic rate. So less stress means better metabolism. So now I come back to the original question, which was, can you fix a slow metabolism? The answer is still yes and no. Improving a slow metabolism involves several strategies. First, consult a health professional for a comprehensive assessment. They can identify any underlying conditions affecting your metabolism, like anemia or hypothyroidism or any other hormonal dysfunctions that can slow down your metabolism. So managing them are crucial. Now, certain medications you may be taking, like antidepressants, may decrease your metabolic rate. So your health professional can switch you to a different type that doesn't. However, beyond this, you can focus on eating a nutrient-dense diet of unprocessed foods, which include adequate protein to help maintain your muscle mass, you're staying hydrated, adding chili and teas into the mix whenever you can. Remember, severely restricting your calories can slow down your metabolism. Make sure you exercise regularly, including HIIT and strength training to increase your EPOC and mitochondrial function, which can boost your metabolism. Prioritize sleep and reduce stress to support overall health and metabolic function. Remember, gradual changes and consistency are key to improving your metabolism. I'd love to hear from what you take away from these videos, so be sure to comment below. If you want my free weight loss guidebook, click on the link in the description. I also have many resources that will help complement this video and will help you with your weight loss journey. So be sure to click on the link in the description below. But to really get the results you want, make sure you come back to watch next week's video. If you enjoy the contents of this video, please like and subscribe to support me to make new videos every week and share it with anybody who might benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dr. Sadali Powell. See you next week.